Lights out. Hello. I'm sure all of you have asked at some time for peace and quiet. But there are times when a little noise, a sound of some kind is, shall we say, reassuring. Especially when that sound comes from the upstairs floor. Lights out. Hello, Mrs. Hawkins. How have you been? Oh, well, just so-so, as usual. Trying to take things easy. Well, it knocked the breath right out of me seeing you here so soon again and looking in such wonderful spirits. How's the upstairs floor? Your floor. Oh, so empty and lonesome. I was up there today for the first time, sweeping out the last bit of trash. Made me so blue looking at the place without her. I saw your ad in the Eagle. Has it been rented yet? No, not yet. Oh, I suppose you're wondering about your furniture. I've done the best for you that I could, Mr. Holloway. It was like tearing my heart right out of me to get rid of these things and sell them. Here's the money. Oh, yes. And I've got all the receipts right here for oh, you. Oh, wonderful. Everything went except the piano. I couldn't even get the cottage for that. But the church said they might be able to use it. Would that be all right? That dear old piano. How well I remember the tune she used to play on it. Uh, what was the name of it? Danny Boy. Oh, yes. <laughs> well, grieving won't do any good, will it? Time's the great cure. <laughs> They'll give us ten dollars for it. No, no, leave it up there. I think, I think that I'll need it. You need it? Oh, Mr. Holloway, you can't play a note. No, I mean for my furnishings. You see, I'd like to rent our floor back. Oh, no. That would be awful. Why? Live up there by yourself, in the very rooms where poor Mrs. Holloway... Why, just a month ago, you couldn't get out of here fast enough. You couldn't bear to look at her furniture, nor her dresses, nor her poor little bird. Well, all that has changed now, Mrs. Hawkins. And besides, I won't be here alone. Not alone? No, I expect to start housekeeping again. Oh, one of your friends from the shop. No. No. A wife. Well, 
Well, that puts a very different face on the subject, doesn't it? Excuse me for wasting my sympathy, but in justice to my dear friend, the first Mrs. Holloway, I'm afraid it's impossible. Not even for two months' rent in the advance? The ceiling rent has gone up, Mr. Holloway. It's sixty-five fifty now. Sixty-five fifty. dollars I couldn't there. do any painting or redecorating. That, that wouldn't be necessary. There's the cost of the ad, seven fifty. Seven fifty, dollars yeah? Oh, to think you're paying me with the very money I got for her furniture. Well, Mrs. Hawkins, is it a deal? Oh, it goes against every principle of mine, Mr. Holloway, but, but you're a young man. I wouldn't want to stand in the way of your happiness. How soon would you, would the two of you want to move in? As soon as possible. And could I have the key now? Oh, yes. Thank you. And when the movers come, would you let them in with the furniture? Yes. just never. Why, you've got everything back just the way it was. Yes, clean as a whistle. Them drapes and the Maxwell Parrish picture. Oh, the jardinier that Father Maloney gave you. Oh, you've even got Charlotte's sewing machine. Well, you've got a home just as it was when Mrs. Well, of course, I saw the big pieces coming up. But I never expected to have any... Oh, Mr. Holloway, you've got Charlotte's rocker. The rocker she was rocking in when she died. Yes. It took a little time and a little work, but it's all back of every stick of it. Even fixing the clock here. I found it in a pawn shop over on 3rd Avenue, all in pieces. I think I've got it to run now. She must be pretty broad-minded. Most brides would have a fit, if you'll excuse my saying so. What time is it? Do you know? Oh, it's uh, eight o'clock or thereabouts. Huh? Has she seen it yet? Who? The new Mrs. Holloway. I didn't see her come in. Eight o'clock? Are you sure that's the right time? Well, sure, yes. I, I checked my watch with the radio. Excuse me. Mr. Holloway. Now, what did you want to run out like that for? Good morning. Oh, Mr. Holloway. Why, I didn't hear you come in. Oh, you gave me a terrible fright last night, rushing out that way without even taking your overcoat. I thought something dreadful had happened. Oh, no, no. We, we got back about one. We, Mr. Holloway? Yes. Yes, everything's worked out just fine. Oh, I suppose you're all married and settled now. Well, isn't that fine? I can't get over why I didn't hear you come in. I must have fell asleep in my well, chair. No, we came in very quietly. We didn't want to disturb you. Like young lovers, I suppose. What does she think about the floor? Oh, she likes it very much. Oh, well, that must be one big load off your mind. Is she up there now? I, I guess perhaps I'll go up and pay my respects. Oh, no. No, that's very kind. But I don't think you should disturb her right now. You see, she's pretty tired, the trip, and, and she doesn't feel very well. I have no intention of disturbing her, Mr. Holloway. That's not my way. This afternoon will do just as well. well my I wouldn't time disturb is her this own. afternoon, either. In a day or two, or a, cu or a couple of weeks, maybe. Please, Mrs. Hawkins, give us a chance. Well, if that's the way you feel about it, Mr. Holloway. Personally, I wouldn't push myself in on the king himself. 
for that matter. Heartless young cake eater. Okay, girlie. I wouldn't crawl up on my hands and knees for you. You're probably lying in bed. In poor little Charlotte's bed. You're just dancing on her grave, that's what you're doing. Just dancing on her grave. Door in the hall. Well, maybe she can't hear me because the dumb waiter's in the way. I'm pulling the dumb waiter down to the bottom of the shaft, then we can talk better. a moment, please. Mr. Holloway, I am not one to expect any intimacy. I don't even expect a friendly cup of afternoon tea. All I expect is common or garden courtesy from certain people these days. But when somebody has been here for over a week and never has spoken to me, has never answered when I knocked on the door... You went up there? You disturbed her? Out of the goodness of my heart, Mr. Holloway. I took her a cup of my richest chicken broth, 252, not counting the rice that went into it. And yesterday, a nice custard. You shouldn't have. I told you. She's not well. Did you see her? How could I, when you changed the lock on the parlor door? Oh, no. Really, Mrs. Hawkins. Now, if she's not well, somebody ought to be there to take care of her. It's not right to have a person in there. What does she do all day anyway, lie in bed? I've never heard so much as a footstep. I haven't heard a dish rattling. I haven't heard any water running. Who washes your socks? I haven't seen her take in any milk bottles. She's still pretty weak, Mrs. Hawkins. Well, then you should have somebody take care of her. It's not right for an invalid like that to be alone. Well, thank you, but we're getting along. We're doing very well, thank well, you. Well, it's not right for her to be locked in there all the time. There might be a fire. Suppose there was a fire, she might get burned I'll up or something. take my chance on that. Well, just as you think, Mr. Holloway. Hello, is this uh, Fred McIntyre, the plumber? Oh, oh, I want to speak to Mr. McIntyre, the plumber. Yes, please. Who is this? Oh. oh. <laughs> Hello, is this Fred? Fred McIntyre? Oh, this is Elsie Hawkins. Yes, Fred, I... I've got some trouble with the plumbing upstairs. It's an emergency. It's up in the... up in the tenant's apartment on the top floor, you know. Fred, rock. Can't this spying, this interfering. I tell you, Mrs. Hawkins, it's got to stop. Who 
Who's spying? Who do you think spying on I didn't you? let that plumber in. There's nothing wrong with my bathroom. And I won't have strangers in my house disturbing her. Huh. And my house can go to wreck and ruin, eh? I expect privacy, that's all. Only to, to live in peace with my wife. Your wife. Some wife. <laughs> do you know what I think about your wife, Mr. Holloway? I think she's a lunatic. <laughs> Why do you think I can't see her? Do you think I'm going to live underneath a lunatic? I'm sitting here, just a poor old widow, in my own house, um, half sick anyway, and someday I wake up on my parlor floor with my head bashed in. Oh, Mrs. Hawkins, nothing is going to happen like that to Then me. what? What's the matter with her? Why can't I ever see her? What's she do up there all day? Maybe there isn't any wife at all. Maybe you've become a thief, or a counterfeiter, or even a murderer, and you're hiding things up there. Well, out you go tonight, Mr. Holloway, and whoever's up there with you. You can't. I paid you two months' rent in advance. No, you can't do that. Oh, you want your money. You all right. You can have it. I should think you would need it. You haven't done any work for a month. Me, I don't care about money as long as I've got peace of mind. We can't move away. I've staked too much. If I promise you that there's nothing to fear, would you reconsider? On the same terms that you had this past month? There's no other way. No, I won't put up with it here. Out to go tonight. You and her, or I'll call the police. Mrs. Hawkins? Oh. Mrs. Hawkins? Yes? I've just spoken to my wife. She wants to see you. Oh? Yes, we changed our minds. It, it'll be on your terms now. Okay? Did you hear me? Yes, I heard you. Okay. Then will you come up right away? Yes, Mrs. Hawkins, yes. come in. Oh, come in. Oh, stay, thank you. Right, just fixing the thing. Here, yes. sit down. Oh. This was your favorite here, isn't it? Uh, yes. Here. yes. Please sit down. Now, what will it be? The usual? Two lumps? Yes, I... It's the door. I, I can never keep it from slamming. Where is Mrs. Holloway? What? She's here. She I just... thought she wanted to see me. You told me she did. Yes, she's just changing her dress. Mrs. Hawkins is here, Charlotte. Are you almost ready? Charlotte? Yes. She always changes her frock when we have visitors. Such a dandy little thing. You still find it. Charlotte was the first Mrs. Holloway. Yes. Who else did you think? The first Mrs. Holloway is dead. Shh, no. we keep faith with them. Not if we go back and build our life again, live our life as we had them before, change nothing. No. Now, mind you, there must be nothing to distress her. They return. Sit down. So, that's what you were doing up here all the time. And that's who you had up here. Nobody. Oh, me and my nightmares. Oh, poor Mr. Holloway, you never did get over it, did you? I suppose people have different ways of showing their grief. I, I, I'd better be running along. No, no, I told her she was here. She, she expects to see you. Uh, well, some other time, I've got a cake in the oven. No, Mrs. I don't take your no. hands off me. No, Mrs. Don't you touch me. But you insisted. You were the one who wanted to be friends again all the time that she was rocking in the chair and you hammering on the dumbwaiter. And when she ran my fingers across the piano keys, you disturbed us. Well, I know now. I didn't know this. <laughs> oh, now, what's the matter with this door? It won't open. The door is broken. I keep it that way for her. Now, listen. Now, you can't start something and not finish it. Sit down. Let's have our tea again. It'll be just like it was before. 
Mr. Holloway, I think you're out of your mind. Do you believe that the dead live again? Do you think that they remember? Keep quiet. That they have feelings? Keep quiet and everything will be the way it was before. Oh, no. Do you think you can call them back with a cup of tea? No, Mr. Holloway. I've got Alfred Stools down John. in the cellar right now. I've got his whole house. I haven't John. changed one smidgen of it. Oh, no. They're happy. Charlotte, They're come in out. heaven where they belong. They don't want to come, come back. Come out, Charlotte. Come out so oh, Mrs. Hawkins can see you. Come out. Scare me. Please, There's Christy, come out, John. Just nobody here. No, don't. Nobody. Oh. Nobody. She's gone. You chased her away. So. Mr. Holloway, come back. Don't leave. Hello. Oh, 